All right, Troy, well, you guys uh, certainly lit up that scoreboard Saturday. Uh, I think most points ever scored at UCF. Tell us a little bit about uh, what happened. Yeah, it was a good offensive performance. Uh, sometimes what's overlooked is, is the play of the defense and special teams. You know, yeah, the, it seems like the offense scored, whatever, 70 points, but you all helped us out a lot. Um, you know, short field, turnovers, um, special teams creating a short field. They scored, you all scored. So, you know, it's a team game. And, uh, you know, for us to score that many points, we couldn't have done it without the help of the defense and special teams. So um, that's awesome. Uh, just looking at the game, looking back, uh, what pleased us the most as a staff was just the number of guys that contributed. You know, anytime you can spread the ball around and, and, uh, and have different guys contributing, it, it just makes, it makes the day easy. And uh, that's what happened. You know, here you had Taj McGowan um, down here in the red zone. Great job up front. Sticking their guys, good job by Kubi Ali coming back, and Taj wouldn't be denied. Um, and then here you've got Snelson right before the half. I thought this was a momentum change. You know, you all got the ball back on the interception, um, and then we were able to score right before the half and kind of uh, demoralizing for, for them. But heck, heck of a catch, great job getting this uh, foot in and making a, uh, making a big play. Great job by McKenzie. He played well all day. Anytime you have two incompletions on the entire game, man, you're doing something special. Amazing. Then here we had Traquan uh, isolate on the corner. Great job. Great throw by McKenzie. Good protection. And now Traquan goes up and makes a play. And then last but not least, you know, when our twos and threes got in, man, they, they continue to roll. And here it's uh, Noah on the quarterback keeper up the middle. Great job by the offensive line opening up a hole, and then he scores. So all in all, man, it was a good performance. We had a lot of guys contribute, and uh, we just got to keep things rolling uh, this upcoming week. Tell us a little bit about uh, how you saw the defensive performance against uh, a good Austin PT. Well, um, you know, I think the positives from the game were obviously we got a lot of players that played too. Um, got some guys some experience. Uh, got a couple turnovers and a score on defense, which is great. Uh, but this was a, a much-needed game for our group. I, I think they were believing the hype a little bit. Um, didn't come out like we have in the last few weeks. A little disappointed with the tackling, a little disappointed with the effort, but I think it was needed at this point in the season. I think it'll do nothing but teach our guys. Um, we've reviewed it. We're ready to move on. We're ready to have a good week, um, but not the, not the performance we were looking for this week. I'm glad you guys scored a lot of points. Yeah, we got your back. Kind of the story of the game for us, when we were running to the football and we were playing harder than them, things happened for us. When those guys were playing harder than us, good things happened for them, i.e. The, the, the tip ball for a touchdown. So um, effort on, on our side of the ball is, is, is non-negotiable. Right here you see Kyle Gibson, edge blitzer, sets it. Pat gets a strip. Griff with an unbelievable one-handed scoop and a score right there. And, and this is the kind of thing that, that we're so capable of, which is a little disappointing throughout the rest of the game. But once again, you can see here, Pat, great job with the strip. We teach the bicep punch. Um, there he goes for the bicep punch. Griff, right there, unbelievable scoop and score. One-handed scoop and score and touchdown for him. And we'd love to see these guys all having a great time celebrating when we do something well. And then the next one here is the, the play that you were alluding to um, that set up the score. A great job by Titus Davis at be, becoming a curl dropper. Okay, Gets sucked up by the run a little bit and then panic drops out, um, which is good by him. He makes a great one-handed catch and he tries to score. One thing we're going to try to tell him to do is he's not a ball carrier, so it was a great teaching point for the defense. We don't reach the ball down there. He was out of bounds, but he did fumble it, got reviewed out of bounds. But great effort by him, great to set up a score. And once again, you, you see the one thing we always teach is the intended receiver is the guy that makes the, the tackle about 90% of the time. And right here, Pat's going for it. Pat kind of misses him a little bit, and Tristan doesn't want to get a clipping there, so jumps out of the way. But you're going to see on the end of the play, the intended receiver once again make, makes the tackle. So we need to always get that guy taken care of in an interception return. Let's move ahead to uh, SMU, homecoming for them, primetime matchup, ESPN2. Uh, tell us a little bit about their offense. Yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be fun. Um, I look forward to these big games. Um, this is a big-time offense we're playing. Um, two big-time offenses going at it. Um, and I'm hoping that we can be a big-time offense and a big-time defense on that day. Uh, they have a big-time uh, passing attack. They have a, a first-round draft 
pick receiver in Cortland Sutton. And then they just got a, another transfer from LSU that's really playing well. I think he's got 70 plus catches on the season already. Um, the quarterback does a nice job and then the running back is efficient in their offense. So you can see here, th this is the, the young man that transferred from um, LSU. Okay. And he's done a really, really good job as becoming that um, secondary receiver in their offense. And, and a lot of people, if you just look at the stats, would say that he's the number one receiver. Um, but obviously, a lot of people are trying to eliminate Cortland Sutton from the game. So he's getting a lot more a lot more touches. But he's a very dangerous kid. He's a great route runner, and he's great with the ball after the catch. Wow. And then obviously, they have some other weapons in, in the game. Okay, and, and what happens a lot of times is people don't know exactly what they're looking at with him. Um, they're trying to take out one, maybe 18 hurt him. Then they're overplaying 18. Now Cortland Sutton's going to get the ball, and he's 6'4", 220 pounds, and he's as advertised. When he catches the ball, he can go. He's a great receiver. He's made some circus catches. Um, he's just a really, really good football player. And so I, I look forward to that. I know, you know, some people – you know, sometimes say, well, you know, you wish you didn't have to play those guys right now. I want this you one. You want to play the best. Yeah, I want to play the best. I think we got really good corners. I think we got really good safeties. Let's go see what they can do. And then also, as you move through the game, you know, as people start overplaying the pass, like, like with you guys, these guys are really good at figuring out what people are trying to do to them. These guys, once they start defending the pass, man, they got a good running back, and he's a home run hitter. So he, he, can really, he can really move the football, too. So, like I said, this is a great offense. Um, They've done a great job coaching these kids. These kids play hard. It's going to be a heck of a football game. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. So tell me about the uh, SMU defense. Yeah, uh, we're going to play a good defense. Um, you know, it all starts up front with those with uh, SMU. Uh, their defense in 99. Uh, they're all active, active inside. They're strong, stout players. Um, they want to create havoc up front. So it all starts. Their defense starts up front with their D line. They want to get after the quarterback. Um, pressure him into making mistakes, get the ball back for their high power offense, and they do a great job. This is probably be the best defensive line uh, unit that we've played up to date. So uh, old line, they've done a great job all year, and they've got their hands full. Um, 99 coming off the edge, uses power and some, you know, quickness to collapse the pocket. Very stout inside, so uh, we've got a tough task at hand. I know our O line is going to be up to the challenge, and then what they'll do is. They'll pressure as well with their linebackers, um, very athletic linebackers, um, and they'll cover you man to man in the, in the back end. So we've got to make sure we protect, and then we've got to get open in the pass game. And they do a good job of, uh, you know, rushing the passer and, and creating havoc. And this was a big play in this game, you know, right before the half, and they try to knock they tried to knock Cincinnati out of field goal range. So they'll mix it up with their pressures. Um, so we've got to do a good job. And then last but not least. You know, the guys, as we, you know, everyone, every defense in this conference, man, they fly around and they try to get as many hats to the ball as possible. And SMU is no different. Uh, linebackers are attacking their downhill players. Uh, corners, the boundary corner 15 is a good football player. Um, he's going to come up and try to make tackles. So we've got to make sure that we match their intensity, their effort. It's homecoming, a night game. Uh, they're going to be jacked up. They're bowl eligible. Um, so we're going to play, play a good defense and we've got to be able to be ready to attack. Uh, attack and uh, and match their intensity uh, Saturday night. But overall, good defense. Um, you know, we got to stick to the process, stick to the plan, continue to prepare uh, each day. And uh, if we do that, then uh, when Saturday goes around, we'll be ready to go. Absolutely. I think our team's ready to embrace this one right here. Yep. Excited. All right. Go Knights. Charge on.